This is the retreat on Celebrity Beyond, Celebrity Cruises' brand new flagship, the largest in its fleet, the third of five Edge-class ships and the most improved, most expanded version of the Edge-class ships to date. The retreat is Celebrity's high-end resort within a resort concept, exclusively for sweet guests. We've had nine days here and did we really think it was worth the considerable extra cost? Did we spend much time here considering the rest of the ship is so fabulous anyway? Is it just a bunch of fancy cushioned sun loungers with a fancy view? Well, come inside with us and we're going to give you everything you need to know. Let's begin. The Celebrity Beyond's asymmetric design has turned heads in both directions, but you can't deny that although the exterior may divide opinion, the interiors are without question some of the most bold, exquisite and original spaces found on any ship of any size in the world. On Celebrity Beyond, they have gone big and spent big on the retreat. It has been extensively reconfigured and expanded to include 22 more guest suites than on previous Edge class ships, and they've even added an extra deck for its new larger sun deck and lounge areas. So what's all the fuss about? We have a bunch of Celebrity Beyond videos on our channel, so please, if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button, please. Because, you know, YouTube can be a cruel master. Thank you. Let's dive in. The suites vary in shape, size and cost, starting with the basic Sky Suites and going all the way up to the uber-pricey Iconic Suites, situated over the bridge, and the Edge Villas, five two-storey villas, the entrances of which are actually within the retreat itself. We couldn't get a look around any of these to show you, unfortunately, because they were all occupied. Never mind, because actually our Sky Suite on Deck 10 gave us more than enough delight to last far longer than the nine nights we spent in it, and they all have butlers, so you can live out your Downton Abbey fantasies whatever size suite you're in. We have featured it in a separate video, and I'll leave a link here at the end. It was a lovely place to stay, and we give it our full attention in our review. The Retreat Sun Deck is the outdoor area set over two levels at the top and front of the ship incorporating a brand new dedicated Deck 17. This is a much expanded area from Edge and Apex, where the Sun Deck is all on one level on Deck 16, their topmost deck. Chief designer Kelly Hoppen, the British interior style guru behind the truly groundbreaking twists and turns the Edge class ship makes in design and comfort, also turned her hand to the retreat, making the Sun Deck and Lounge the extremely comfortable places to spend some time. We think the design has definitely improved when compared to Celebrity Edge, it has a warmer feel to it with softer tones and more private areas. Celebrity have also moved the hot tub from where it was on the edge and apex, which was attached to the pool, to around the sides and away from the pool. It makes the pool area look less crowded, but do you prefer a hot tub to be near the pool? Would you use a hot tub less if it was tucked around a corner? Beyond also has two hot tubs instead of one. Having said that, the hot tubs are situated with a better view overall, as you can see here, but there is no shade at all over them which for me is a negative. So it's definitely swings and roundabouts. Speaking of swings, the hanging seats in the centre of the pool were in the shade, so during the day you could sit in them and stretch your legs out into the shallow water. Perfect. But my first little gripe was I found these hanging chairs over the pool to be a fabulous idea in concept, but in reality these were slung a little too low to enable free movement and you almost found your backside dipping gently into the water. Maybe they can be adjusted a few centimetres higher? It would make all the difference. From a practical point of view, at first we preferred the upper deck. It has those fabulous forward views, some great cabana style enclosed areas off the sides, and it's where the pool and hot tubs are. Maybe our love for the upper deck at the expense of the lower deck was a little premature, as during the cruise we found on certain days and certain times of those days, it got very busy and in order to find a little bit of solitude, we found ourselves moving to the lower deck. Actually, what we first thought of was a bit of an afterthought, the lower sun deck was actually very inviting, with lots of shaded areas and easy access to and from the main public resort deck through these glass doors. Nipping back to our suite, which was towards the aft of the ship on deck 10, was so much easier and more interesting by using these little card-controlled entrances. Lower deck is also of course the deck with direct access to the lounge directly below it, but more on that in a minute. Also, the retreat bar was very convenient and the staff constantly came round offering to get you a little drink. We sailed many, many times on luxury cruise lines like Silver Sea and Seabourn, and the service was just as good here. I suppose for a similar fare, you would expect that. Another tiny criticism though is about the bar and cafe area, and it's the lack of shade. 
The area was covered in a sort of slatted pergola-style canopy that did nothing to keep out the sun. Just my personal preference, and I understand that many would disagree. But being blonde, pale, and quite frankly possessing the skin robustness of Bug Naked, that's the captain's hairless sphinx cat, by the way, it would have been nice to have some shaded tables. I know these are little things, but you did want a balanced review, right? A place you don't need priority is the lounge, another super comfy space to snooze off all that incredible food. We have sat in all these chairs and almost all of them are like being cradled by an angel. Also here is the retreat concierge team, which will sort any problem or query you have so you don't have to queue at the guest relations desks on deck three. Did we use this lounge a lot? In a word, yes. It was my favorite place to come during the day when I wanted to relax indoors. The only gripe I had, and you're gonna moan at me for this one, is the lack of places to charge your gadgets. In the Cafe Albaccio, there's a large table with sockets built in so you can sit and enjoy a coffee while you do what you need to do on your laptop. There's a similar table in the Retreat Lounge, but it has no power at all. I know, I know, what you're doing on vacation with your laptop and all that, but it would be nice to be able to charge your phone without having to go back to your room. There were a couple of European sockets in the whole room, but it could do with having more. No flaming, please. These are practical issues, you know. One thing the Edge and Apex has that Beyond hasn't is the outside terrace area, off the lounge. Instead, the lounge has been expanded to an internal space that stretches right across the width of the ship. There are seemingly endless choices when it comes to dining on board Celebrity Beyond. The ship boasts eight premium dining venues in addition to all these included eateries on board. And, shameless plug, you can see and sample every single one of these in our Ultimate Celebrity Beyond Dining Guide, which I'll leave a link for in the top corner now and at the end. I urge you to watch it because it'll give you invaluable information from which to make your choices. What we don't include in that dining guide, however, is the Sweet Class exclusive dining, because we have included it all in this video. It's difficult to get round them all, and you may not want to because the dining exclusive to Sweet Guests is almost as good as it gets. There are two restaurants we're going to cover here, Lumini and Blue. But first, those venues are not the only places in the retreat you can get food exclusive to sweet guests, so let's take a look at them first. The retreat sun deck has a rather nice bar area on its port side, and this is also an al fresco cafe, which is open during the day for light poolside lunches and bites. The menu is small, but there's a nice selection on here, including a chicken Caesar salad, a shrimp salad, or a turkey BLT wrap, which are all available immediately. Or if you can afford to wait a few minutes, you can have a fresh luminized signature burger or chicken burger served with fries or potato chips. The retreat lounge is conveniently situated below the lower part of the sun deck and can be reached without going inside the main stair lobby via these handy stairs straight off the sun deck. There is a variety of small plate food and snacks in the retreat lounge throughout the day, starting with pastries, charcuterie meats and cheeses, parfaits and beautifully prepared fruit served from 6 till 10 a.m. We didn't see any lunch items out, but that may have been mistiming on our part. But I don't think they serve any form of lunch here, but correct me if I'm wrong. However, if you're patient and can wait until mid-afternoon, the most delicate and fresh afternoon tea is served by your butlers from 3.30 to 4.30 p.m. The scones are just out of the oven and the little sandwiches are so fresh, as are the mini donuts. It really is so delicious you have to be careful. The temptation to eat too much is as hard to ignore as the food itself. That's not all, for if you venture in here for a pre-dinner drink, you'll find another foodie spread of nibbles and canapes to spoil your upcoming evening meal. Now we've whetted your appetite, let's take a deeper look at the two dedicated restaurants. First up is Blue. Blue is the restaurant for both Aqua Class and Sweet Class guests and is open daily for breakfast and for dinner, but not at lunch times. Blue is one of our favorite dining venues. Located on deck five above the main dining rooms and next to Eden, we love the entrance and the decor of the restaurant. The food here is supposed to be a little cleaner, healthier and lighter than the other restaurants, but it's still delicious and we found it plentiful. It's our favorite place for breakfast and had we not been filming a complete dining guide, we would have been here almost every day.
The evenings here are great, the staff are just so friendly and welcoming. As we said earlier, the food is geared towards more healthy dining options and to be honest, when there's food everywhere you look on the ship tempting you to go off the rails, it's a refreshing option. Helen began with a short rib beef starter with little cubes of succulent beef on top of mini pancakes served with a drizzle of delicious jus. I had a beef tartare which was a larger portion and to be honest, I could have eaten this again and again. It was delectable. For mains we had trouble choosing so our brilliant and incredibly chirpy waiter offered to bring us one dish each and one to share. I had the veal osobuco and Helen had a melt in the mouth strip steak salad. Then in the middle we had a plant based Beyond Burger which had been so perfectly cut in half there must have been either a samurai sword in the kitchen or a laser beam. With both of us almost at Mr. Creosote waffer thin mint moments, thank you Monty Python, we decided to share an apple pie and ice cream dessert. Phew, gastrointestinal explosion avoided. For now. If you don't fancy blue and want somewhere even aqua class guests cannot frequent, then there's Lumini, the restaurant exclusively for sweet guests, now located within the retreat area on deck 16 at the front of the ship. Previous Lumini restaurants on Edge and Apex were on deck 12. That space is now occupied by additional suites. Kelly Hoppen has again added her magic touch to the interiors and I've got to say, it's a beautiful restaurant with some lovely artwork to admire as you dine. Lumini is open for breakfast, lunch and dinner and is the go-to restaurant for sweet guests who don't wish to venture out into the world of premium dining. And why not? They have premium dining right here. The breakfast menu is the same every day but it does have some really lovely and somewhat unusual breakfast items which we really liked. And everything here is as you like it. Just ask the waiting staff and your wish is their command. Just look at these pastries as well. Oof. Over a couple of mornings we had a ham and cheese omelette served with bacon, a delicious coconut milk soaked muesli dish served with berries, pomegranate and a caramel powder, and an egg white breakfast bake which was like a frittata with spinach and sweet potato in it, topped with sour cream. Feeling the need for something simple I ordered a bowl of Greek yogurt served with granola and some pouring honey. And I'm absolutely convinced the granola was smashed up Nature Valley bars. Utterly convinced. Can someone confirm or deny this? On another morning we had a prosciutto on sourdough and the whole wheat crepe filled with egg white, spinach and Swiss cheese. I then tested the as you like it service by ordering completely off the menu, ordering scrambled egg with salmon and sourdough toast, followed by Greek yogurt and crushed up Nature Valley bars. <laughs> I mean, granola. So you don't get too fed up with my voice, here's what we had for lunch set to some posh music instead. Dinner is not surprisingly an elegant affair with the menu offering daily signature dishes by celebrity's global culinary ambassador to Michelin star chef Daniel Bouloud. Chef Daniel also has his own signature restaurant on board Celebrity Beyond, so please take a look at our dining guide for a quick look at that. It's called Le Voyage. We started our meals with a burrata salad and chicken liver parfait served with lovely toasted pieces of sourdough. For mains I chose the beef short rib which was an enormous chunk of cow which defeated me totally. Helen, being more sensible with her constitution, had the vegetable udon noodles. To finish Helen had a deliciously light coconut cremo and I had a bitter chocolate tart which was mmm. If we were to express a preference between the two restaurants though we would choose blue. The decor and ambience is a little lighter as is the menu. So you see, we're not big eaters, so the lighter choices suited us better. Lumini is still a fabulous experience. Let's summarise our thoughts. Celebrity Beyond is such a fabulous ship, built with such incredible attention to detail, it's quite hard to take everything in, even on a nine-night voyage. There's so much to see, so much to do, and so much to eat, it makes you wonder if Celebrity have shot themselves in the foot. I mean, why have the retreat at all when everywhere else on the ship is so premium? Well, the fact we spent so much time in the retreat should give you the answer. I can't put my finger on it, but we found ourselves gravitating towards it whenever we wanted a bit of sunshine, a relaxing hour on a comfy sofa, and of course, <laughs> that afternoon tea. The sweets themselves would obviously attract a premium price. You tell me a cruise line that doesn't charge more for sweets and the upscale service you receive from your butler and brilliant staff in the retreat does make a difference to your time on board. 
those that enjoy the ultra luxury lines like Silver Sea would also enjoy this experience and I guess if you preferred a larger ship with all the facilities and choice that goes along with it, I can't think of a more suitable cruise line than Celebrity to recommend to those people and I certainly wouldn't say that about any other large ship cruise line we've been on. Celebrity is simply a cut above them all. And no, this was not a sponsored trip, we're not paid by Celebrity and this is our own opinion. Could this tempt those small ship ultra luxury regulars away from their favourites? Would this even convince the staunch small ship fans who would never in a million years be tempted to try a larger ship? Well, if that larger ship was Celebrity Beyond, yes, I believe it could.